This two-year pandemic has been brutal for small businesses in America, with restaurants particularly hard hit. But if you're searching for a silver lining, consider that a reshaped economy is changing the rules in favor of those familiar faces who work in your favorite spot. The Independent Restaurant Coalition reports since February of 2020, 84% of restaurants have raised wages and 37% have added paid sick leave to benefits for employees. So are these changes permanent for a restaurant industry hustling to survive? NBC News senior business correspondent Stephanie Rule has our Sunday Spotlight. Restaurant work is known for long hours, low wages, and few benefits. COVID could be changing that. It forced a lot of us to look in the mirror, right? Whether it's a change of job or how we, we operate our businesses. Tom Marolakis is the CEO of Scopos Hospitality Group. It owns six locations in northern New Jersey. COVID still poses a challenge, most recently due to Omicron. In some cases, we were forced to close our restaurants for a week because we had a shortage of team members. Despite the setback, Tom says business is back to pre-COVID levels. But how he does business is different. The company offered health insurance before COVID. Now it's added dental, vision, and a 401k program. Now that you're paying more, are you getting better workers? Absolutely. We're getting individuals that are buying in, that are staying longer, and getting more done at the end of the day. It's similar for Marcus Oliver. He owns Miss Delta in Portland, Oregon. I took a look at the whole business plan and business structure. It kind of completely changed how we do things. With a smaller staff, his employees earn more. They now share tips, and almost all are on salary. Additionally, his restaurant is open fewer hours and even closes two days a week. It was really hard at first because I was so stressed out and worried, well, we need that money. And it took, you know, three to four months before I realized that people just started coming the other days. You learned that it was good for business. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. Exactly. And, you know, I'm glad I finally did it because I've been wanting to do it for years. Sales are down about 30 percent compared to pre-pandemic, but profits are up and the work has gotten better for everyone. You think it's going to last? Before this, the restaurant was madness all the time. It was just chaos. Now it's really made it a lot easier on everybody to work. Seven years ago, Hannah Chang left her Wall Street job to open Mimi Chang's with her sister. We're really well known for our dumplings. In the first weeks of the pandemic, she worried about its future. At first, we thought we were going to close and we surveyed our team and most of them wanted to still work. So we had to figure out a way to stay open. That included shortening hours, shrinking the menu, raising prices, and shipping dumplings to all 50 states. She also increased pay and the pace of raises. I would say they definitely strengthened and made our business more dynamic. But what has bigger implications? The pandemic has united her and thousands of similar mom and pop restaurants to fight for their interests. We are now working together as one big voice in order to affect change in our industry. Like securing health care for low-wage restaurant workers, Hannah also hopes the disruptions of the past two years have made diners more understanding. There's no such thing as a free lunch. Cheap food comes at the cost of cheap labor. More and more owners and their employees hope the pandemic has created an appetite for change. For Sunday Today, Stephanie Rule, New York. Steph, thank you very much. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.